Hello there. My name is Primal Thunder, and welcome back to my season review series. Today, we will be looking at Pokemon Go's ninth season, titled Mythical Wishes. The first time a season has a true traditional title. And overall, this event was good, but... There were a decent amount of things that didn't really live up to the potential that they had. The events for the season included... Heading to Hoenn Raid Day, Mythic Blade, Something Extraordinary, December Community Day 2022, Holiday Event 2022 Part 1, Holiday Event 2022 Part 2, Winter Wonderland 2022, Hisuian Avalug Raid Day, New Year's 2023, Chespin Community Day, Twinkling Fantasy, Lunar New Year 2023, Year of the Rabbit, Larvitar Community Day Classic, Crackling Voltage, Team Go Rocket Takeover, Noibat Community Day, Valentine's Day 2023, Love Disc Research Day, Go Tour 2023, Las Vegas, Nevada, Primal Rumblings, and Hoenn Tour. <sighs> Starting things off right away with the Heading to Hoenn Raid Day. The pros including... The debut of Mega Sceptile and Mega Blaziken. And Mega Swampert. Sceptile, Blaziken, and Swampert were greatly shiny boosted. Sceptile, Blaziken, and Swampert can now be shiny in the wild. Sceptile caught during event hours needs the exclusive move Frenzy Plant. Blaziken caught during event hours needs the exclusive move Blast Burn. And Swampert caught during event hours needs the exclusive move Hydro Cannon. The only problem is that the paywall that they had was completely unnecessary. Like, no joke, they had a $5 paywall for bonuses that they could have just implemented. People are really getting confused by Niantic because throughout this season, they made a lot of poor decisions with marketing. Either they're overpricing something or they're ruining an event by not giving a price. Looking at you, Global Hoenn Tour. But yeah, personally, I feel like $5 is just money that would be way better spent on your family for the holidays. So I didn't buy it. Mythic Blade. Pros. The debut of Crabrawler. Collection Challenge. Terrakian and Verizian caught during event hours got the exclusive move Sacred Sword. Again, nothing new. It is their signature move. There wasn't really anything wrong with this event. It was a pretty solid first real event of the season. Something extraordinary. Pros. The debut of Keldeo. Unique incense spawns on top of the base Mythic Blade spawns. Because keep in mind, this event did happen out during the something during the Mythic Blade event. Keldeo, caught during event hours, got the exclusive move Sacred Sword, but only if you completed the Keldeo research during the Mythic Blade event. So if you fail to complete it after the event ended, it didn't count, it didn't get the move. And the special research had some pretty good rewards. If you are looking for some rare Pokemon, then it might have kind of been worth the buy. I mean, $8, I think, was still a decent amount of money, but hey, it's Niantic. Like I said, the con was just a paywall. December Community Day 2022. Pros. Every Community Day from po every Community Day Pokemon from 2022 was available. Pokemon from the previous year were in raids and eggs. And everything featured was greatly shiny boosted. And all Community Day Pokemon from 2021 and 2022 got their exclusive moves. 
cons, nothing in particular. It was a pretty solid community day. This may have been... I mean, the community day wasn't weak by any means because it did have some really strong things in there, like dino spawns and litwick spawns, but... I would just say that the 2022 con days were pretty strong overall. I'd say probably the weakest was Alolan Geodude, personally, because nothing was really going on, but... All the others were still pretty solid. <sighs> Holiday Event 2022, Part 1. Pros. The debut of Mega Glalie. The release of Shiny Bergmite. The return of Delibird. Return of Winter Carnival Pikachu. Scarf Sfeel. Winter Cape Glaceon. And Jingle Bell Stantler. Cobalion, caught during event hours, got the exclusive move Sacred Sword. And later in the same event, we got the debut of Scatterbug and the introduction of Vivion patterns, which finally give a which finally give a real use to the already overlooked feature postcards. The only con is that just like the Halloween event, the time research did have a paywall. Which basically means that every major event in December had a paywall. And that's not necessarily the greatest look. Holiday Event 2022, Part 2. Pros. The debut of Holiday Eevee and Bo Bear Tick. The introduction of Timed Research Wishes. Throughout this event... Throughout several events this season, you could choose a bonus that would be during the event, and the time research you would get would be have tasks related to that bonus. So it was during the holiday event, part two, the Lunar New Year event, and the Valentine's Day event all had this. Kyurem, caught during event hours, had the exclusive move Glaciate, which is its signature move. And the return of Bo Cubchu. And the only con is the return of Bo Delibird. You guys already know my thoughts and opinions on that costume. I ranted about it so much on this channel. And if you've been watching me for a while, then you already know. Winter Wonderland 2022. Pros. The introduction of daily incense time increasings. This was incredibly useful if you were trying if you were still hunting the Galarian birds. The introduction of a new feature were traded Pokemon always being lucky if you had them since 2017. So if you want a guaranteed lucky Pokemon, then have a friend trade you a thing that was from 2017. And a collection challenge, because why not? <sighs> the only con is that the event had pretty poor timing. Because, you know, of course they would have to give 30-minute daily incenses on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. You know, the two days in December where people are not going to want to go out. But, yeah, it's still pretty cool, I guess. Hisuian Avalug Raid Day. Pros, the debut of Hisuian Avalug, the release of shiny Hisuian Avalug, and Hisuian Avalug was greatly shiny boosted. Cons, once again, the event had pretty poor timing, because this event did happen on Christmas Eve. New Year's 2023. Pros. The debut of Nighttime Top Hat Pikachu and New Year's Noctowl Collection Challenge. The return of all Party Hat Pokemon. There is way too many to list here, but all of them came back. Reshiram, caught during event hours, got the exclusive move Fusion Flare, which is one of its signature moves. And the debut of 2023. Hey... New year, new me, I guess. There wasn't really anything wrong with this event. 
The New Year's event is always really short anyway, so we can't really penalize it for that. But, yeah. It was still a pretty solid way to kick off 2023. <laughs> and they really kicked off 2023 Community Days right with Chespin Community Day. Pros. The release of Shiny Chespin. Chespin was greatly shiny boosted. Quilladin evolved during event hours became Chestnut with the exclusive move Frenzy Plant. And, to the surprise of everyone, the debut of Kecleon. Yes, I made a short about this. After like five years of Gen 3 being in the game, people are finally able to complete their Hoenn Platinum Medals. For the longest time, you can only complete Kanto and Johto. And yeah, you can finally complete Generation 3. And getting that is going to be very, very satisfying. Because a lot of really big players were missing Kecleon. And all they had to do was get one and they got the medal. So, easy platinum medal. <sighs> there was nothing wrong with this community, eh? There wasn't really on... There wasn't anything wrong with Chessman Day to begin with, but Kecleon being thrown in there really made it a lot better than it already was. <sighs> Twinkling Fantasy. Pros. The debut of Mega Salamence. The release of Shiny Dedene. A lot of spawns were very meta-relevant and rare. Collection Challenge. Zekrom, caught during event hours, got the exclusive move Fusion Bolt. Two times XP and bonus candy depending on throws. And since this event had a lot of really rare Pokemon, this event, this bonus was really good. Lunar New Year 2023, Year of the Rabbit. Pros. Garumaka was shiny boosted. Incense chances of increased chances of lucky Pokemon and lucky friendships. And timed research wishes rewarded players with either half hatch distance, 30 minute daily incense, or two times catch Stardust. The only con was that the event was way too short. I don't know, it just feels like the event was like only four days because it was. But yeah. It was, like, really wild how short the event was. And I feel like it switched timings with another annual event that we'll get to later. Larvitar Community Day Classic. Pros. Larvitar was greatly shiny boosted. Peepitar evolved during event hours, became Tyranitar with the exclusive move Smackdown. There's nothing wrong with this event. Uh, again, Community A Classics are always really good. But... Yeah, I can't really penalize it for not dropping a new shiny. Because Community A Classics aren't supposed to drop new shinies. But... Yeah. It was still pretty awesome. Crackling Voltage. Pros. The release of Shiny Helioptile... And Tapu Koko. Helioptile obtained from raids and eggs were shiny boosted. And some spawns were meta relevant and or rare. <sighs> if I had a nickel for every time we had an electric type based event in the month of January, I would have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. There was nothing wrong with this event. It was pretty amazing how we got shop we got shiny Tapu Koko way more early than we thought we would, but it was still a pretty amazing event. It what it had some pretty fun surprises like Team Go Rocket Takeover. Pros included the debut of Shadow Reggie Steel. The debut of Shadow Lolan Vulpix, Shadow Spoink, Shadow Blitzel, Shadow Pidov, and Shadow Joltik. <sighs> Frustration was removable with a charged TM. The release of Shadow Shiny Nidoran Male and Shadow Shiny Magnemite. 
The Return of Shadow Shiny Beldum. And Reggie Steel, caught during event hours, had the exclusive move Zap Cannon. Overall, this Team Rocket event was pretty solid. Nothing too spectacular, but nothing bad either. Noibat Community Day. Pros. Noibat was greatly shiny boosted. Noibat evolved during event hours, became Noivern with the exclusive move Boom Burst. The introduction of the move Boom Burst. And players got bonus spawns of Noibat by defeating Noibat in 4-star raids after the event concluded. I'm including this here, not Chessman, because I'm pretty sure this is the first time where the 4-star raids have actually been soloable. I know that because I, I went in with some of my strongest ice types and I soloed it pretty easily. Then again, it was pretty easy because although the CP was pretty high, it, Noibat is still a very weak Pokemon, so... Granted, I did have only like 10 seconds left, but... It was still pretty easy as long as you knew what you were getting into. Cons, nothing in particular. It was actually data mined that we would be getting a Community Day move of Boom Burst, and... People were t were torn between whether it would be Wismer or or Noibat. Everyone had their money on Wismer because since it was February Community Day and we had the Hoenn Tour coming up this month, everyone thought it was going to be Wismer because it's a Gen 3 Pokemon. And we did have Hopip Community Day in February because of Johto Tour. But turns out Niantic did a complete 180 and gave us Noibat. Granted, Boom Burst was once Noivern's signature move, but it was still pretty awesome seeing Noibat Community A, and it kind of broke the internet for a bit. Valentine's Day 2023. Pros. The debut of Mega Gardevoir. The release of Shiny Frillish and Shiny Tapu Lele. A global challenge was available, which required 100 million gifts to be sent across the world. Frillish defeated in raids and hash from eggs were Shiny boosted. And Volbeat and Illumise were spawning globally in the wild. <sighs> Cons, nothing in particular. This is the event I feel like it swapped times with the Lunar New Year event because for the past couple of years, the Lunar New Year event averaged between being about six to seven days long, while the Valentine's Day event was always really short. But now the Lunar New Year event was really short and Valentine's Day was seemed very long. Granted, it wasn't all bad. It did It did give people a lot of chances to get... The extremely rare orange and white Flabebe flowers. Which I went an entire year without seeing one orange and only a handful of whites. So, it was a win. <sighs> Love Disc Research Day. Pros. Love Disc was greatly shiny boosted and spawns during the event were rare and relevant. This wasn't really too special of a research day because it did actually get leaked by Niantic themselves in the App Store. So it wasn't really a surprise. And it wasn't really that great either because Love Disk is really not a useful Pokemon at all. But it does have a pretty good shiny. And if you really were looking for shiny Love Disk, then this was probably your best chance you'll ever have of getting it. Oh, here comes a big one. Go Tour 2023 Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. Pros. The release of Shiny Surskit, Shiny Gulpin, Shiny Torkoal, Shiny Cacnea, Shiny Kecleon, Shiny Tropius, Shiny Relicanth, and Shiny Jirachi. The debut of Brendan Hat Pikachu and May Bow Pikachu. 
the debut of Primal Kyogre and Primal Groudon, the introduction of Primal Reversion, four collection challenges, everything was shiny and greatly shiny boosted, Torkoal, Tropius, Relicant, Volbeat, Zangus, Solrock, and Lunatone were available in places they wouldn't be. You know what, scratch Lunatone. Lunatone was spawning in America at the time. And Groudon and Kyogre during the event. Ours knew the exclusive move Precipice Blades and Origin Pulse, respectively. The only con is that the event had plenty of connection problems that made gameplay unbearable for some players. In fact, it was so bad that Niantic made the event last for an extra couple of hours as compensation. But for some players, that wasn't really enough. You'll see why in a second. Primal Rumblings. Pros. Collection Challenge. Rayquaza caught during event hours got the exclusive move Breaking Swipe. The introduction of the move Breaking Swipe. And at noon, Absol would spawn for five minutes. Wasn't that long, but hey, if you don't have shiny Absol, then it was a pretty good opportunity to get it. You just had to be pretty much on the clock. <sighs> there was nothing wrong with this event. It was pretty simple, but pretty cool. Like the Pokeball pep rally that we had back in the season of Heritage, this event wasn't really meant to be taken seriously. It was more than just a prep event for the Global Hoenn Tour. <laughs> Hoenn Tour. Pros. All the shinies released in Las Vegas were released globally. Illumise, Volbeat, Zangoose, Seviper, Solrock, Lunatone, Torkoal, Tropius, and Relicanth were spawning globally in the wild and in eggs. <sighs> Latias and Latios were appearing in the wild. Depending on which version you picked, Ruby would see Latios and Sapphire would see Latias. Certain species of Pokemon were shiny boosted. Four collection challenge. Unknown H, E, O, and N were appearing. And special research had great rewards. This event did have some serious problems, though. One, the event had barely any shiny boost. Sure, sure, some things were shiny boosted, but it wasn't anything compared to the Kanto and Johto tours where Everything was shiny boosted. And there was no ticket sold as part of the event either, so nobody could get as many shinies as they'd hoped. You know? And Niantic made plenty of poor decisions that made this tour the most wasted potential it could have probably ever had. For the one sole reason alone, the fact that there was no ticket. Sure, there was a ticket. But the only ticket that was available was the ticket that would give you the Shani Jirachi Masterwork Research. Other than that, everyone was on equal footing when it comes to Shinies. Which, granted we did complain in the past about Niantic paywalling some things, but they, they probably interpreted it as being like, Oh, you don't want any paywalls? Then we won't sell a ticket for Hoenn Tour. Have fun. But yeah, it's just kind of a pain because Niantic, as they make mistakes, Niantic just gets impossible to defend at times. They have good intentions trying to remove all the COVID bonuses and try to make the game outright fun and outgoing again, but people just aren't accepting it. And the worst part is, you know, they're doing some other things with the remote raid passes that are kind of starting a lot of drama. And yeah, the fact that they didn't sell a real shiny boosting ticket for Hoenn Tour really did 
miss out on a massive money-making opportunity. All right, guys. That was Season 9 of Pokemon Go Mythical Wishes. I wish you all a very pleasant time. And I will see you all in Season 10, which is currently unannounced. But it's almost March 1st, so we'll get it eventually. We're probably going to get it either today or tomorrow. I might update the pinned comment. We'll see. But yeah. God, we're on 10 seasons already? Oh my god. Alright guys, I'll see you all in season 10. Have a good day guys. Bye bye. Make sure to subscribe.